Hi everyone, my name's Amy. Come and join me on a special virtual tour of Melbourne Zoo. Thanks Amy, it's Gus here. I'll be your virtual tour guide as we explore Melbourne Zoo together. First stop is the Gorilla Rainforest Trail. Here you'll find ring-tailed lemurs. These Madagascan natives lord over the zoo's lemur island, an exhibit that zoo visitors can walk through and get nice and close to these striking primates. Around the corner, you might smell the next animals before you see them. The Western Lowland Gorilla family that lives at Melbourne Zoo includes Kimya, Baby Kansi, Yushka, and Big Silverback Atana. We might see if we can get a better view of them at the next viewing spot. Animals like Kansi are not only ridiculously cute, but also represent hope for this critically endangered species that is sadly losing more and more of its wild habitat every year. Did you know you can help Kansi's wild cousins by simply recycling your mobile phone? Head to our website for more info. Can you hear that tall bamboo swooshing as we walk past it? It's amazing how tall bamboo grows. Ah yes, here's Felix the pygmy hippo enjoying some sunshine. Pygmy hippos are pretty elusive animals and prefer the solitary life, which is why Felix is happy hanging out on his own. He weighs roughly 275 kilograms, a lot less than the 1800 kilograms the hippos you often see in books and movies weigh. Can you spy Zilly the cassowary in here? Everything from her blue neck, red wattle and hard cask on her head make her one of the most striking animals in Australia. Let's go and see the treetop apes and monkeys now. Tiny cotton top tamarins are one of my zoo favourites. Their rock star haircut stands on end when they get excited. Pretty cool, huh? Sometimes it feels like their neighbours, the black-handed spider monkeys, have an extra arm. These incredible climbers use their long tails to grab hold of things and swing from branch to branch. The first thing you'll notice when you see a black and white colobus is their impressive tail, which is about the same length as the rest of their head and body put together. Here's Lilian and Jin, the white-cheeked gibbons. One of the most beautiful sounds in the entire animal kingdom is a pair of gibbons singing their duets. Did you know their long, strong arms help them to move around the rainforest with incredible speed? Let's head back around to the gorillas and see what they're up to on the other side. Welcome to Trail of the Elephants. Don't be deceived by the name, there's much more than elephants along here. First stop is the raft of Asian small clawed otter pups. Looks like first time parents Odie and Paula have been giving their pups some swimming lessons. Good luck little ones. I think we all know what animal is coming up next. There are three Sumatran tigers living at Melbourne Zoo. As solitary animals, they live by themselves. Hutan and Binjai live on this trail, swapping exhibits every few hours to make sure they have new areas to sniff and explore. Sadly, there are estimated to be fewer than 400 Sumatran tigers remaining in the wild, making these animals even more precious. Let's wander up here and see what's further along the trail. Melbourne Zoo's beautiful and iconic butterfly house. Hmm, it's always nice and warm in here. I could get lost in here, so we better keep moving. Here we go, Melbourne Zoo's spectacular herd of Asian elephants. Ear flapping is a sign of a happy pachyderm. Unlike African elephants, only the male Asian elephants have tusks. And while many people know that ivory poaching is threatening elephants in the wild, 
Habitat loss and humans encroaching on elephant habitat is one of the biggest problems that these big friends are facing in the wild. Unsustainable palm oil plantations that are springing up across Southeast Asia are a massive problem for elephants, but you can help them by asking our politicians to make palm oil labelling mandatory in Australia. Likewise, the orangutans are facing an uncertain future due to unsustainable practices in the palm oil industry. Like us, orangutans are great apes and we actually share about 97% of our DNA, which is really cool. Okay, let's head out into the sunshine and see who else we can visit. Clinton and Nakuru, the giraffes. The tallest mammals on earth spend a lot of their day stretching those long necks up and stripping leaves off trees with their long blue tongues. All right, let's go and see some Aussie animals. Now, we're a little biased, but we think Victoria's koalas are cuter than the ones found up north. How can you resist baby Waru's fluffy ears, thick fur and button nose? Good morning wombats, nice of you to join us. Hello kangaroos. And you too storks. Quick reminder from that wombat sign to do the right thing by the animals and choose recycled toilet paper. What do we think? Black with white stripes or white with black stripes? These extraordinary stripes are unique to every single zebra in the world, which when you think about how many zebras there are, is pretty mind-boggling. Oops, watch out for the buggy. Here we go. These baboons are always busy and up to something. Baboons live in hierarchical troops, with the big boss baboon having the biggest and pinkest bum, and also big hair. Everything about him is actually pretty big. Let's scoot around here and visit Samanka the Malaysian tapir. She's a pretty shy animal, preferring to keep to herself, but with her incredible nose and amazing black and white markings, we think she might secretly be a few people's favourite animal. Any tapir fans out there? The collared peccaries are just next door to Samanka. If you look really closely, you'll notice the hair on their neck is lighter than the rest of their body, hence why they're called collared peccaries. Here we go, the carnivores that live at Lion Gorge. A lot of people walk past these dogs and ask if they're hyenas. These animals couldn't be further from hyenas if they tried. African wild dogs are ferocious hunters, working as a pack to track and kill the animals they hunt. But unlike most other hunting animals, they care for their sick, injured young and elderly. I like that these carnivores have a soft side too. Hello boys, Ndidi and Zabiri the lions are keeping a watchful eye over their kingdom. Did you know that lions are the only big cat that isn't solitary? This means they're the only ones that actually like the company of others. Cool, huh? Everyone loves the busy coatis at Melbourne Zoo. Always climbing, sniffing, digging and exploring. These animals are never slacking off. Speaking of never slacking off, new mum Miska has her paws full raising three snow leopard cubs at the moment. As they would in the wild, the trio will live with mum for about 18 to 24 months and learn everything there is to know about being a snow leopard from her. Poaching and habitat loss are threatening snow leopards in the wild. It's hard to believe that anyone would want to do anything that would harm these balls of fluff. As we zip through Cat Alley, please remember to keep your cat safe at home rather than roaming the streets. This is for both their sake and the sake of wild animals that live near your house. 
And here we have Kang Juice, the father of Miska's three cubs. As I mentioned earlier, like most big cats, snow leopards are solitary, so Kang Ju doesn't play a role in raising his offspring. But judging by that strut, we'd say he's not too phased about missing out on the joys of parenting. I spy Indra stalking us in the bushes. As with her relatives at Trail of the Elephants, Indra also prefers to live by herself, where she can lord over her territory and ambush any predators that come her way. Everyone should have heard of these guys before. Tasmanian devils are the largest carnivorous marsupials in the world. This means they're the biggest meat-eating mammal that carries its young in a pouch on Earth. Sadly, these guys are facing a really uncertain future, with road accidents and a contagious cancer called devil facial tumour disease threatening them in the wild. But we're working hard to change their fate. Okay, let's see what else we can find up the main drive. Hello Wilbur and Little John. The Aldabra giant tortoises are the oldest species living at our zoos. And while we're not 100% sure how old our ones are, they can live to be over 120 years. So these guys have plenty of life left in them still. It looks like the keepers have put some capsicum out for them to enjoy too. Let's go check out what's in the reptile house today. Between taipans and rattlesnakes, there's a lot of animals in here that could kill you with one swift bite. Being a reptile zookeeper is definitely not a job for the faint-hearted. Did you know that when the Europeans first sent a platypus specimen back to England to be studied, the scientists thought it was a hoax? They assumed someone had stitched a beaver and a duck together to play a trick on someone. We're quite proud of how cool and unique Australia's animals are. Next up, we've got the animals of Wild Sea. There's the pelicans and the rays, and of course, the majestic seals swimming around. Have you heard about our marine response unit, which rescues wild seals that have run into trouble? If not, we recommend you Google it. That team does some amazing work. And that also includes looking after the little penguins that call Victoria home. Those coloured bands on their wings are there to help keepers identify who is who. Meanwhile, we have no trouble telling the Fiordland penguins apart. Ed and Kim were both rescued by the Marine Response Unit and now live a happy life alongside the little penguins. Look up high and you might spot red pandas Seba and Roshani. Can you spot something over there, across the lake in the Japanese garden? It's the Saimang family. There goes baby Kamala swinging from ropes and stealing mum's food. There's one more animal we need to go and see. Can you guess what it is? It's the meerkats. These tiny but busy carnivores are always on the lookout for predators and threats. The meerkat on duty is called the sentry. It's his or her job to keep a lookout while the others dig for food. There's nothing better than a bit of teamwork when you're a meerkat. It looks like the keepers have been creative and popped some treats in the bottom of this bucket of leaves. This is called enrichment, and it encourages the meerkats to practice their natural foraging behaviours. Thanks for joining me for this virtual tour of Melbourne Zoo. We hope you enjoyed it. <laughs>